Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday. My name is Brendan Moore. I get to help lead our worship today, and I'm excited that you're here uh, today. A lot's going on at Ascension Lutheran Church this fall. Uh, You've been seeing it on the screens. Uh, You're checking it out in your worship folders. Just one thing I want to make sure we draw our attention to is that that is Trunk or Treat, uh, which is happening next weekend at both campuses. Uh, Maple's on Saturday. Tyler is on Sunday. Uh, So make sure you sign up your trunks. We need all the trunks we can get for Trunk or Treat at both locations next weekend. So uh, if you're down to volunteer your trunk to have some kids uh, take some candy from it, that would be awesome. Uh, Make sure you sign up through the church office. And uh, if whether you're volunteering your trunk or not, we also need your candy uh, because kids need candy for Trunk or Treats. And you don't want to deprive kids of candy, do you? Of course not. So drop off your candy at the church office here so we can hand it out to kids. Make them happy. Have a great trunk or treat next week. Uh, Make sure you do that at the church office uh, this upcoming week because this is the last week to prep for it. Uh, Besides that, uh, there's a lot happening. Uh, Make sure you check out your worship folder for that. Um, But today, uh, our Lord Jesus comes to us with his spirit uh, and with his body and blood. And so we want to prepare our hearts and minds for that for worship today. So I invite you to stand. As we prepare with our opening song.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sins the Lord does not and I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. We kneel or sit in confession. Father in heaven, we all have a platform and a voice to the world through social media. This technology can be a gift that connects communities together and shares your love and your word with the world. But we have often misused this gift to misrepresent you to those who do not know you. Or we've allowed social media to distract us from the good work of service and obedience to which you've called us to do. What you have given us as a tool, we have often abused for our own purposes. And so we confess together, we are sorry for the ways we have misused technology and social media. We are sorry for using our voice in ways that do not glorify you. And we are sorry for allowing anything, including social media, to waste your precious gift of time. Forgive us of these and all our sins and help us to submit all these gifts for your glory. Lead us to speak life to the world around us. For the sake of Jesus, amen. As a gracious Father forgives His children, so our Heavenly Father has heard our confession and has forgiven us. He sent Jesus to die for us and to redeem our whole selves for eternity with Him. And His Spirit is with us to lead us to submit all of His gifts to Him. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the giver of all good gifts. We are grateful for your abundant provision of all things beneficial for us. Lead us to submit those gifts to you so that we may use those gifts in service to our neighbors and for the building up of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. My son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle readings from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ Forgave you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to sing the Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, But I say to you who hear, <clears throat> love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And for one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High. For He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not. And you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, with all put into your lap. For with the measure you use it will be measured back to you. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Did you know that any person, any two people in the world who don't know each other can be connected by seven or fewer acquaintances? It's true. It's, uh, the idea is that you and I can be connected to either the King of England, assuming you don't already know him, or, or the Dalai Lama, or Madonna or some random guy in Australia uh, by seven acquaintances or fewer. This idea was popularized by social scientists in the 1960s. They, they just kind of figured, they said, hey, you know what? I bet the world is actually smaller than it feels. I bet that this is true. They called it the, the six degrees of separation because they thought it was six acquaintances. Well, we couldn't really prove that theory true until 2006. A little, bit, little, little itty-bitty company called Microsoft uh, had this uh, on online platform for instant messaging. Uh, and they surveyed 80 billion conversations on their platform in 2006. And they looked at 180 million different users that they had. And they found that any two users who had never been uh, in contact with each other before could be connected by seven or fewer acquaintances, 6.6 .6 on average to be exact. So there were seven degrees of separation between any two people on this platform in 2006. Now keep in mind, this is just on Microsoft's uh, instant messaging platform in 2006. Fast forward to today, and we've, we're way more connected than we were back in 2006, because all of these social media apps are now huge. They're everywhere. You've got at least one of them on your phone, I'm willing to bet. And they've been around for more than 20 years. Uh, I had no idea LinkedIn was founded in 2002. I was 11, 
and I knew nobody who was online and LinkedIn in 2002. Uh, But there it is. All of these things were so connected nowadays so that Facebook was curious about how exactly connected we are. So they ran a similar experiment to Microsoft. In 2016, they said, how far removed are our users from each other? So they surveyed and found that any two users on Facebook in 2016 22% of the world's population, by the way, had a Facebook profile in 2016. And so they looked and they said, there are only 3.5 acquaintances between any two people on Facebook in 2016. Less than four degrees of separation between any two people on that 22% of the planet. That's incredible. That's insane connectedness. We've gone from seven degrees of separation now down to four. And that's just in Facebook. That was just eight years ago. Now, eight years later, in all of these social media giants, I can imagine, I don't have any proof, but it feels like there's now less than two degrees of separation between people. When you take into account all the social media opportunities, that is one connected world. In fact, the world is so connected that 64% of the entire world is on some kind of social media. That means that you and I can connect with 5.5 billion people. We have the opportunity to look inside the life of 5.5 billion people, to see the public thoughts of 5.5 billion people. That's insane connectivity. That's a, that's a miraculous thing, and it's one of the reasons why so many people are online. And, and there's so many promises of social media. This connectedness uh, allows families and friends and loved ones who are separated by, by distance to be able to keep in touch and to keep tabs on each other. Uh, my wife and I were both from here in Wichita, but the last seven years we've spent in Florida and in, and in uh, St. Louis, and so we've been distanced from our families for all of that time. And social media has helped us to keep connected had to keep in touch even when we're so far away. My kids, uh, my oldest is six, so her whole life was spent away from grandparents, aunts, and uncles, and cousins. Social media has helped us to stay connected. But even more, even not just the people that we're, we know we love and that we have relationships with, but social media helps us to connect with people all the way across the world so that we can experience all sorts of different cultures, all sorts of different perspectives, all sorts of different ways of life without ever leaving our living room. We can have conversations and discussions and even civilized disagreements with people on social media and and learn about them and and hear their opinions and their perspectives. And, And it's amazing because we're all so connected, even though we might have never met before, and even though we haven't gotten on a plane and experienced that life before, we can still connect in meaningful ways. And if all of that fails, uh, there's always unlimited entertainment. Social media will feed you as many funny cat videos and, and skits and entertainers as you could want so that you never have to be bored ever again. All of these promises from social media just It's no wonder why 64% of the entire world is on some kind of social media. But if you've spent longer than 30 minutes on any kind of social platform, you know it's not perfect. You know that it doesn't deliver on all of these promises. You know that some of these promises, it over-delivers so that it goes beyond being a good thing, becomes a bad thing. Because we've all experienced it. We've all sat down on the couch and you're a little bit bored, you got nothing to do, and so you open Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or whatever, and you, and you start scrolling. You don't have any plan in mind, but you're scrolling and you're liking and you're commenting and you're sharing, and 30 minutes goes by and you're scrolling, and an hour goes by and you're scrolling, and two hours goes by. I'm not judging, but you scroll to three, four hours, and then it's like, where did my day go? Or, or, or it's way past my bedtime, I should have gone to bed two hours ago, and I'm still up, and I'm still awake. And then some of you are iPhone users, and today's Sunday, which means you're going to get a notification here in a few hours this afternoon, letting you know exactly how long you've spent on your phone this last week. Anybody mortified by that? Yeah, if you're smart, you turned it off a while ago, because you don't want to be confronted with that. And then if, you, if you're really brave, you'll click on the notification. 
And it'll tell you exactly how many minutes and hours you've spent on every single app. You can see uh, how much Facebook took away from your, from your week. You can see how much time you spent on Instagram. TikTok, who knew, so, who knew a one-minute video could last so long? How did one minute turn into so many hours? And you think, oh my goodness. This thing, this, this unlimited entertainment has now distracted me from being connected to the people who were around me. Maybe there's something to be aware of. How about the, those civilized conversations I mentioned? Some of you were laughing when I mentioned it a couple minutes ago. Because it does, it's true. We can have civilized discussion on social media. But when's the last time you saw it? Is your, so, is your Facebook feed just full of, of nice comments this election season? No. It's arguments. It's people trying to win. It, it, it's name calling. It's, it's this thing that has the capacity to connect us and to unite us. Instead, it feels like it just divides us. It feels like it just causes fights. All of these kinds of things, all of these connections, they should mean that loneliness is eradicated, right? If 64% of the population can be connected, surely in that five and a half billion people, there should be one person that every person can connect with in a meaningful way. And yet we know that Gen Z and millennials, the two generations who use social media the most, who've grown up with it their whole lives, we know that they also report the highest levels of loneliness and isolation, even though we're so connected. And whether you're a Gen Z, you're 12 to 27 years old, or if you're a baby boomer, and you're 59 to 77, uh, you know that your expectations, your perceptions of your life have been skewed because of social media. Because now we're not just trying to, to keep up with the Joneses across the street and to measure our life against theirs and the things that they've got, but now I can look into the life of the billionaire across the world and I can see into, his, into their life, into their vacations, into their stuff, and into their everyday. And, and in this connectedness, then, is, is, is bringing up feelings in me of, of, of jealousy and of anger and frustration. And it's like this, this thing that, that has the potential to, to connect and to unite and to develop and grow really just leaves me feeling isolated and, and divided and dissatisfied. Because what we've realized over the last 20 years is that connectedness does not equal connection. Connectedness doesn't equal connection. So what do we do? Do we just, what does Christianity school of life tell us about social media? Do we just throw it out? It's not in the Bible. You're not going to find Facebook in the Gospels. Does it mean it has no place in our life? Maybe. Maybe. but it still has its promises. It still has its potential, but it definitely has some dangers to manage. So the first step in managing the dangers of social media is to guard our heart. There we go. Guard our heart. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Guard your heart. Protect it. Keep it. Preserve it. Defend it. Because the things that we see with our eyes, the things we hear with our ears, have a way of seeping into our heart. And the things that are in our heart have a way of either poisoning our heart or strengthening it. And, and, and then the things that are there have a way of coming back out through our mouths or through our hands with the things we say and the things we do. And if we allow things that we see and hear to poison our hearts, they're going to come back out in the way that we talk to the people closest to us, in the way that we treat them. And if it's, we, we can't allow social media, media to just happen to us, to, to allow us to poison our heart. The things that we do and say are too important. The things, the condition of our heart is too important. So just let it be poisoned like this. We need to guard our heart. We guard our heart so that we can control the things that come out. We guard our heart so we can control what comes out. The first step in managing social media, if we're going to be on, we need to guard our heart so we can control what comes out. And we control what comes out by being a builder. 
what comes out, we need to be a builder. St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, he says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that I may benefit those who, he, who listen. Be a builder. See, with social media, we have the opportunity to connect with anybody in the world. But it also means that everybody in the world has the opportunity to connect to us. That means we have a platform. We have a voice. We have a microphone that has the potential to reach the world. And so it's our responsibility to decide how we're going to use it. Are we going to use it to, to join with everybody else? And to add our voice to the, to the voices that divide, to the voices that frustrate, to the voices that isolate, to the voices that cause names and outrage? Or are we going to use our social media voice to build others up? Are we going to use our voice on social to strengthen relationships? Are we going to use our voice on social to, to, to heal and to help and to make someone who feels isolated make them feel connected instead? Are we going to use our voice in social to make somebody know that they're loved when they feel like they're hated? See, we have this power, this potential to do both, to destroy and to heal and to help and to connect. And if, if we claim to be Christians publicly, then it's not just our voice that we're representing. We also represent Jesus to people who don't know him. If we are acquainted with people who aren't acquainted with Jesus, then they're separated from Jesus. And we are one of those degrees of separation, one of those links between them and Jesus. And the way that we use our voice on social is a way that somebody else relates to Jesus because they're not acquainted with him yet. And so we can use our voice to draw people to him or to push him away. It's our choice and our responsibility. So if we're going to be on social, then we need to be a builder. To be a builder. Who knew? Who knew 20 years ago that so much potential existed with this social media box we opened? Who knew that there were so many dangers and pitfalls when we got into this? And now here we are with 64% of the world engaged online. And it's up to us to decide how we're going to use it. I encourage us to guard our heart. Control what comes in, so that, guard what comes in so we can control what comes out. And be a builder. And don't put all of our eggs in the social media basket. All of our hopes and expectations. All of our, the way that we view ourselves. Because no matter what, social media is not going to satisfy. It's not going to fulfill all of its promises. Only Jesus is going to give life. Social media can't give life. Jesus gives life. Jesus fulfills all his promises. Only Jesus gives life with every breath he has. Until his last breath, Jesus has been focused on us, giving us what we need. Only Jesus' words give life. Every word he speaks it doesn't divide, it doesn't tear us down, it doesn't destroy, but it builds up. It strengthens us. It gives us what we need. It makes us whole even when we don't like what he has to say. We know that every word that he speaks is for us and for our good. Only Jesus gives himself for us. And only Jesus can truly connect us. Jesus connects us to God even though we were so separated from him by more than seven degrees. We distanced ourselves from God, and yet Jesus connects us to him so that there is no separation, so that he's always with us. And Jesus connects us to each other. You and I and every believer that's ever lived are connected in, in an unbreakable way, stronger than comments and follows and shares. We're connected by the blood of Jesus. We're connected by this common faith that we have in the same one Holy Spirit. We're connected by the body and the blood of Jesus. We're connected by him in ways that nobody can break. Social media can encourage and facilitate these connections. We can be connected to other believers who can strengthen this in us and strengthen our hearts. 
and we can connect other people to Jesus with our voice when we guard our heart so we can control what comes out and when we decide to be a builder. But all of these things can only happen when we submit this, this gift to him. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand and to make a confession of the faith that we've received with the words of the Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed. Together we confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of Let us pray. Lord God, you have given us an incredible gift to connect with the world in social media. Lead us to use that gift for the benefit of others and to guard our hearts against all that would replace you as our God. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, with us, salvation is impossible. But with you, all things are possible. Give boldness to your church to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, by whose death and resurrection The way to your kingdom has been opened, Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, bless all who study at our universities and seminaries. Raise up more church workers, for the harvest is plentiful, the laborers are few. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, lead our households to find eternal rest in your Son and his word. Give fathers and mothers diligence in teaching their children and perseverance. Uh, For us all, keep us from the hardness of heart. Give us an urgency to hear the good news of salvation today. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, guide our nation and its leaders in true wisdom to promote honest labor, temporal protection, fitting enjoyment under the sun. Guide your Christians to serve Christ in their citizenship and callings. Do not let our hearts be occupied with the vanity of riches that perishes, but with true joy in you, Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. When the righteous cry, you hear, O Lord, and deliver them out of their troubles. Draw near and save the brokenhearted, the crushed in spirit, the sick and those in need, especially for Buster Bockelman, Corrig Boyd, Charlotte Mandelick, Les Moss, Paul Patrick, Jack Rapier, Scott Roberts, Ron Sokin, Michael Castor, and all those on our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy. So, Lord God, Heavenly Father, your Son left his earthly home to do his saving work, and so he knows what it is to leave family behind. Comfort your children who have left home and loved ones for the sake of the gospel. Set them firmly into the family of the church and sustain them in the hope of eternal life in the age to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. We worship our Lord through our giving of tithes and offerings. I invite you to do so at this time, bringing them forward to the offering plates at the front of the church. Bring with you your attendance cards, both members and guests alike, 
We worship our Lord then through these offerings. Please stand. We pray. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. You have had mercy on those whom you've created. You sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own words. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, worship, for the, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had offered thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after the supper, he took the cup. And after he had offered thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith to life everlasting. Depart from his table with peace and with joy. Amen. Having received this gift, we return thanks. We do give thanks to you, Almighty God. You love us, you care for us, and here you have fed us. We pray now, having been to this table, that you would strengthen our faith in you and our fervent love for one another. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with His favor and give to you His peace.